Artificial intelligence is expected to boost the world's economy, creating about $13 trillion, worth, uh, trillion dollars worth of GDP growth by 2030. That's according to a McKinsey Global Institute report. However, many economies are still lagging behind in tapping into AI potential. That's because of growing concerns such as job losses and data privacy as the world embraces a full digital economy. Now, Liliosa Muturi is the impact manager at Summer Source, and she joins me now live in studio to discuss this further. Elisa, thank you very much for joining us. So thank we're talking you. about moving towards a digital economy. Of course, mm -hmm. AI is one of those top trends that, are, that will enable this environment. Mm -hmm. So what do you see coming next for AI locally and globally? So on a local level, let's just start by a lot of education going around platforms like this where people can have discussions about AI, what it is and what it is not. Uh, demystifying some of these myths that are causing a lot of fears amongst people. That's the first thing that would come locally. Secondly, we currently have thousands of youth that are training data for AI algorithms right here in Nairobi. So in terms of the skill sets that are available for youth, if you think about uh, the global economy and how it's growing, there is expected to have about 11 million youths getting into the job market annually by the end of this decade. And they're getting into a digital economy. So what it means for Kenya is we are very well placed to have uh, youth that are already leading in these skills, they will become the leaders in AI. But on a global front, there is a race to get to level five with autonomous vehicles, something that we haven't even started thinking about locally, but that is a great race to see us having self-driving cars on the roads and lots of discussions around the ethics of AI, around data privacy breaches and what that means for AI. And of course, now talking about the bias around AI and how that can be limited. Okay, and I mean, you're right, public awareness of AI technology Technologies is quite low. You mentioned quite a few of those fears that have been raised about uh, around this technology, and of course that is that is affecting businesses and even individuals. So, what do you think needs to be done to uh, raise awareness more about this technology? You know, and just move people away from the fears. Yeah, you know, fears are expected. We are human beings, and with a wave of change comes a lot of uncertainty, comes a lot of doubt and uh, fear around your personal security. If you think about every revolution that has ever happened from the industrial revolution, from the agricultural revolution to the industrial revolution, and now the tech revolution, people will always be skeptical. And a lot of the fear comes from not understanding. So what needs to happen is have more platforms, more forums. There are a lot of forums around deep learning about AI, but most of these forums are only exclusive to people in the tech industry. These need to be opened up wider to, the, to, the, to a global audience and have everyone come in and start understanding and asking these questions. And of course, not being afraid to ask the questions a lot of people are afraid that this could be a touchy subject, mm. so let's just ignore it. But on grassroots level, it's very important for children to learn this at school. The same way we have computer sciences in school, AI is a broad computer science. It's not taught in schools right now, but it's something that should be happening because AI is actually the future. Right. Let me just touch a little bit more on the fears. And one of the main fears is you talked about, of course, uh, privacy data privacy, but also job losses. I mean, a lot of people are thinking, well, I'm going to lose my job. Are they going to lose their jobs? <laughs> That's a very good question, Panina. So President Uhuru Kenyatta said he wanted to create 10,000 jobs uh, through the digital economy by 2020. I have seen 20% of that number actually working at Samosource, coming in to train data for artificial intelligence. So that's not job loss. That is actually job creation, if you think about it. And when it comes to data privacy breaches, a company like Samosource, big tech companies like Samosource, are working very closely with their clients to ensure that they comply to global data protection regulations. And even here in Kenya, and in most countries in Africa actually, have passed a bill around data protection. So that really reduces the risks and should help with the fears. Okay, so we're talking about creating platforms where people could know more about AI, but what about on a higher level when it comes to decision makers? What can be done on that level? The first thing that has to happen is to have decision makers start to understand it. If decision makers are not understanding what AI is about, then they cannot, it cannot trickle downwards. So it's a lot of understanding that needs to happen. Let's start having the same discussions in conferences that are not really paving way for AI and put this as a priority. Uh, 
through policies and regulations and just in the private sector in with governments as well this will go a long way in, in them starting to make that decision to adopt AI so many businesses have already adopted this they say that the market size is slated to reach 200 billion dollars by the end of this decade so many other businesses are already leveraging what machine learning has to offer from cost savings to them being able to make decisions based on the data that they're receiving there's a lot of big data that is um, there's a lot of information that is hiding behind this big data and when companies start actually looking at this data it'll make them a lot more efficient okay and i know that some source build an ai hub in africa i heard about that and i thought okay interesting for a continent that has been branded the dark continent, and a lot of people still argue, internet coverage is still quite low in Africa. Why did you go for Africa? Um, contrary to popular belief, internet coverage in Africa, thanks to countries like East Africa, where the ICT ministry is really pushing for this, um, our average broadband speeds are actually very high. All right. So a lot of uh, tech companies actually look into East Africa to um, build their operations. Some of our clients already have house here in, in, in Africa. But the biggest thing about us is that we've got a very high literacy rate, mm -hmm. a very high literacy rate that does not match the job opportunities that are available. So the future of work is digital and you've got AI companies that are, bi uh, that are opening office here, then uh, this country becomes uh, just the best place to do this work. Okay, so what future plans do you have for Africa? Um, we currently have lots of youth working on AI algorithms here in Kenya, in Uganda. We've done work in Ghana as well. And we're currently recruiting in some of the sub-Saharan African countries, but just being able to expand opportunity to people that are, to youth that are underserved, that is what drives us as an organization. All right. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Now I know I won't have a board taking over my job here at CGT. And thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you, Vanina. Thank you so much to be in studio with us.